Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are doing a series on the Islamic ethical code and we have talked about different uh, attributes that a believing person must acquire. There are many uh, good characteristics and qualities we have to try and observe in our lives and we have to rid ourselves from many uh, evil uh, characteristics and our shortcomings must be uh, observed so we can improve ourselves. Today we're going to talk about another attribute um, and based on the sermon of Imam Ali uh, this is a quality that a believing person must acquire. He says that whoever reflects upon his own shortcomings um, will not be concerned with the shortcomings of other people. Shortcomings we have many. We all are imperfect people. Very few perfect people exist on earth and so we're all imperfect and therefore we have many many shortcomings. What unfortunately happens is that we always look at the shortcomings of other people uh, and deficiencies of other people but we look at our own perfections uh, and we don't uh, look at uh, and observe our own shortcomings. In another place in Nahjub Allah Imam Ali Islam says that uh, when people are looking at the Aib, the deficiencies of other people, Ib Nafsak, you try and find your own faults, you find, try and find your own deficiencies. So human beings have a habit of looking at their own good deeds and they look at the uh, shortcomings of other people. But it should be the opposite. We should have uh, a very good reflection and observation of our own faults and the uh, good deeds of other people. And that way we would never ever criticize other people. Uh, in, in, in English there is a proverb that, you know, there is a saying that when you're, when you're pointing a finger at another person, then all other fingers point to yourself. So even when you are pointing a finger, the rest of the fingers are, are at yourself. They tell you that you have more faults. Why look at the faults of other people? Why look at the deficiencies and shortcomings of other people? So how do we control ourselves? Well, first of all, um, Imam Musa Qadim al-Islam has given a very beautiful solution. He says, um, yawm. He is not a true believing person who does not hold himself accountable every day. So it is an important thing that we should hold ourselves accountable. Every night I should hold myself accountable and say, what have I done wrong today? So when I hold myself accountable, I will not be looking at the faults of other people. I'll be looking at my own faults. If I, I should be so busy with myself looking at my own faults, I should not have time looking at the faults of other people. In another hadith, I think the Holy Prophet وسلم, or one of the Imams وسلم, have said, Hold yourself accountable before you're held accountable. So holding ourselves accountable means that accountability is not for others. Allah will hold the others accountable. Allah will hold everyone accountable on the Day of Judgment. But we need to hold ourselves accountable. There, Yes, there should be accountability, but that is not the job of individuals, but that's the job of family within ourselves and people who are responsible for, at offices or people who are responsible for um, job at government and other levels. So there should be accountability, but who holds the others accountable? We should be holding ourselves accountable rather than waiting for someone else to come and hold me accountable and I just look for holding other people accountable. I should be holding myself accountable. So accountability is one's own job. I should not be uh, waiting for the Day of Judgment to be held accountable. I should be holding myself accountable. One of the things that happens is that um, people who are always waiting, you know, you know, as they say in Farsi, that you, you are searching for the faults of others. That's a very a bad habit. Um, usually as children, uh, we pick it up, uh, we have it, but we never rid ourselves from it. Uh, many things as children, we, we, we are, they are, those habits are not bad habits as children, but they are bad habits because we are supposed to grow out of those bad habits. 
you know, children are possessive. You know, they always say, this is mine, this is, uh, it is my dad, he is my dad and he's, she's my mom. Possessiveness is a quality of children. And as we grow older, we need to learn to rid ourselves. Many people never grow up. Likewise, uh, this habit of uh, holding other children for, at fault. It, it was your fault I fell down. It was your fault I did not do my homework. And we never ever come out of that phase. Psychologically, we are supposed to grow up and grow out of those uh, childish um, habits. So what do we do? So one is accountability. Secondly, when we think that the others are at fault, we, uh, we always blame others for everything. You know, it's a blame game. So who do I blame? Well, because I didn't have uh, good friends, I ended up uh, becoming such and such person. Because I did not have good company, I ended up becoming a, a, a bad person or an evil person or thief or a fraud or whatever. So we always try and blame others for our, our shortcomings. If we always told that I could have changed my company, I could have found new friends, I could have avoided being in the company of those friends, I would have improved. So it is extremely important that we uh, in our private life do sit down with ourselves and I face my real self. I tell myself who I really am. Don't betray yourself. Don't lie to yourself. Many times we know deep down our heart or we can find out who we really are, but we never uh, search for our real soul in ourselves. Man arafa nafsa faqad arafa rabba, whoever Imam Ali Islam says or the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whoever uh, knows himself knows his Lord. I have found at times when I tell my friends that this is your, uh, this is your shortcoming, then and they, 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 they don't believe it. And sometimes you feel, hang on, how come this person doesn't even know who they really are? Because they have never searched for their soul. You know, when a psychologist or a, um, a counselor sits down and says, this is your fault or this is your shortcoming, you fail to recognize it. You fail to uh, accept that this is real you. Why? Because you have never sat down with yourself to tell or to find out who you really are. So please find time for yourself. Don't give so much time to others. Or oh, this is this is how he is like. This is how she is like. This is they are bad. They are this. What about myself? Have I ever looked time for myself and and uh, analyze my own personality? Self analysis is the greatest analysis, and we do fail to to really analyze ourselves. So please do analyze your own soul. And sometimes when you find it difficult, sit down with some very close friends who really know who you are. Um, and they will tell you who you really are. So what does, what does it mean that you find faults of others? You always look for what the others have wrong. This is what this person could have done for me and they didn't do. Hang on. Could you have done something for someone else and you didn't do? I think we will know. How many times we uh, we uh, uh, fell short? You know, we know how many times we fall short on on helping others. So I think it is extremely important that we do tell ourselves where we did wrong to others. I used to always think that these people who disrespect their parents or do not fulfill the duties towards their parents. Uh, did they ever analyze themselves, you know, at a younger age that they could have become what they have become? Because you see, on day one, a criminal, a big criminal, never ever proves to be a big criminal from day one. They build on to becoming a big criminal. So they are developing themselves slowly. Likewise, we, are, we become who we become spiritually, uh, not on day one, but slowly we have adapted to those evil habits. It is important that we, at very early stages, hold ourselves accountable and control our, uh, our uh, conscious in, in developing into becoming an evil person. 
So it is again uh, self-analysis that, that would control uh, our evil deeds. Finally, I would like to say that uh, you many times do have um, you are you know a person becomes habitual of always praising and bullying other people uh, by saying this is your fault, this is who you are, but they never um, give themselves time. What is the solution? Visit the graveyard uh, on a regular basis. If you can't, then remember death, uh, which is inevitable, which is the greatest truth about life. When we remember death, we remember that we will be held accountable. In the faith of Ahlul Bayt it is described that all of our actions will become uh, creatures in our grave and they will haunt us, they will live with us. So you need to rid yourself of the shortcomings and faults. I would like to end here uh, with um, one uh, parable. Uh, many times when you are looking in the mirror and you don't look at yourself and you look at the faults of the mirror, then you always find the faults of the mirror. But you, when you are looking at your own reflection in the mirror, then you find your own faults. It is important that you look at your own faults, even in other people, that do I do this? I don't like this person's behavior, but do I do this? I will rid my own uh, behavior, you know, I will rid myself of this bad behavior so I can improve. And if you don't like someone else's behavior, then change yourself so then people don't like you. They would like you only and only with the good behavior that you have. Thank you very much for listening.